Mr. Mr. Speaker, it's a very sad day, eh? a sad day in our parliament when persons are called upon to make representation on behalf of the people who elected them through the democratic process will come in, make a contribution void of content, just parading void of content, void of substance, parading on an ego, Mr. Speaker, then leave the chamber and not here to listen to the refutal of what one can safely say will a series of misinformation. Mr. Speaker, today the Prime Minister has tabled a motion to borrow some $202 million for, among other things, the completion of St. Jude. Mr. Speaker, St. Jude is very dear to me. For those who don't know, I hail from the eastern village of Mikud in this country. My daughter, who has now occupied international chairs and has been seen globally on CNN and other media network, was born at St. Jude. So St. Jude is very dear to my heart. And so today, without an iota of doubt, without any dint of apprehension, I wholeheartedly, Mr. Speaker, support the motion for the borrowing of this money for the completion of St. Jude, among other things. Mr. Speaker, I first want to, ah, thanks. I first want to, Mr. Speaker, I first, I'm a little confused now. I'm not sure that I'm infected if John this, but um, um, I, I know I'm saying correctly, yes. Mr. Speaker, I first want to visit the terms and conditions of the loan. A 20 year loan. 20 years, five years grace, five years grace, yes. That means le setlisien, pou poumye seklenea, nou poko ka vie pe l'onna. Interest rate at 2%, and I will deal with interest rates, Mr. Speaker. My zeal has now returned instantaneously. Because today this house is witnessing borrowing at 2% per annum. But yet, on the eve of an election, a prime minister had the audacity to forward for signature an agreement with a penalty clause of 1% per day. But I'll get there. 1% per day. And if this is not a financial atrocity against the state, it amounts to treason in my books. Because if you care about these people or the people of this country, you do what Philip J. Pierre, the, oh sorry Mr. Speaker, I called his name, the member for Castries East did negotiate a loan at 2% per annum on a reducing balance. That is a master stroke, totally unprecedented. Not giving DFCs at 8% per annum, or doing the airport at a total combined interest rate of 15%. But I'll get there. I'll get there. So yes, Mr. Speaker, 20 years, five years grace, 2%, 2 per annum on a reducing balance. And Mr. Speaker, I challenge anyone, any one of the technocrats, politicians, or otherwise, to give me any comparable loan with those terms. 
tell me when last in the history of this country of ours have we borrowed money on those terms? I want somebody to tell me. I want somebody to tell me. Mr. Speaker, I see a light on you. Um, South, member from Nico South. On a point of order, Mr. Speaker. Um, in fact, um, the money that we borrowed from the World Bank was 40-year money, 10-year um, moratorium, at a half a percent. Mr. Speaker, you know, when one has habitually cultivated the habit of speaking on truths, whatever he or she sh says, you take it with a grain of salt. And unless I can see documentation in substantiation of anything said by the leader of the opposition, I will take it with a grain of salt, salt and totally disregard it. Because if I were to ask him for the 23 islands he promised to build, I cannot see them yet. If I were to ask him for the 800 deportees, I will not see them yet. If I were to ask him, didn't he say Grenada raised the gas by $11? And in less than five seconds, he said he never said that. You would understand why I am totally apprehensive about believing anything he says. I ain't dealing with this year. Pakwe. Ipavwe. Feimuto dokuma avokwe. So, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker. As I said... I challenge anyone, and I'm not talking about the COVID loans, you know. I am not talking about COVID loans when the ECCB are totally different. I'm not talking about the, there was a crisis, Mr. Speaker, and this world crisis caused all organizations, domestic, international, and otherwise, lenders and donors to do things in a manner they had never done before. Basically, to militate against what was happening. So, Mr. Speaker, even with this loan, you have a disaster clause. A disaster clause which essentially means that if there is something like a hurricane, what happened in Morocco, what happened in Turkey, any of those natural calamities that militate against your ability to pay will be factored into the conditions of the loan and adjustments can be made accordingly. Where else has that been done in this country? Nowhere. And it had to take the financial maneuverings of an astute Prime Minister, Philip G. Pierre. And if he were anything like his predecessor, he would have gone down the doldrums of financial calamity, if you want to call it that. But Mr. Speaker, I first want to come to, in my contribution that would be relatively short, like me. I first want to come to things that the leader of the opposition said. And you know, when you listen, Mr. Speaker, you wonder if you're hearing what actually comes from the mouth of certain persons. He came here and he indicated that he heard stories. He heard a story from the Prime Minister and another story for the member for Viewfort North. And the facts do not match the stories. I had to ask myself, excuse me, am I really listening to the leader of the opposition? In fact, Mr. Speaker, I got a clip. I got a clip with the very individual claiming that they lie and they lie and they lie. And I'm wondering whether he was looking himself in the mirror. Because I could not believe that the leader of the opposition on this motion would have the audacity to refer to persons as giving stories that do not match facts. Something he knows how to do very well. He probably has his PhD in it. Now, 
Mr. Speaker, he said, St. Jude is 80 years old. Now, mind you, mind you, in the same breath that he says St. Jude is 80 years old, he does not say the site is 80 years old, you know. He said St. Jude is 80 years old and we cannot use those buildings. Yet he goes on to say that the buildings will get in. He said what we are using are 80 year old buildings, but he says in the same breath the buildings will get in. Let's at least see. No mlogi ka wep with a te miku south de we so. Diko sa se building na 80 years old. Katri ve lani. Me a mem mouma ika di sa. Ika di ba la kwaze ek yo 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 gotli yo yo demolish li. Yo kwaze. So si yo ti e bo yo 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 vi e ba e li. So si 80 years old, esse ado 80 year old building ou nou kamene moun. You see, and sometimes Mr. Speaker, when persons are stranger to the truth, although I say that with caution, because I just remember a certain person in this August chamber said, the truth is what you believe. So how can you gut an 80-year-old building and go into an 80-year-old building at the same time? The two don't mesh, Mr. Speaker. Exe kalte man yes alek, me ka tan le set li siye ka di sa tu. Me ka tan le set li siye ka di. Nom le te ka bay zot o building state of the art. Exot vle viye ado 80-year-old bil le set li siye. La pani pièce building Saint Jude à Cholma qui t'a fait 80 years ago. Tout vie building a croisé et vie rebuild. And it is that kind of misconception that, that perpetuates the minds of the gullible Mr. Speaker and causes them to have this one track mind. But you see, had there been financial prudence, Mr. Speaker, the need to be borrowing this money here today would have probably been something that was totally unnecessary. Because we suffered wastage in this country. Millions and millions, and I'll give a few examples in a bit, Mr. Speaker. If those monies were readily available, the Saudi would have probably lent us money to do some DFCs, yes, you know, and even the DFCs, today they ask you for roads. Mr. Speaker, there is one example where a contractor signed a DFC, and even before he qualified for payment, he assigned interest payment to a third party who was collecting it at the treasury before he became entitled, you know. That is what was going on in this country. I'll say it again. I will say it again. Mr. Speaker, there were DFCs given to Fresh Start. And I speak from a standpoint of authority because I know I have the documentation to substantiate. Fresh Start assigned the interest payments to Timothy Mangal. Fresh Start had not even become entitled to payment yet of the principal because they had not executed works to any great significant tune. But guess what? They were collecting $218,000 in interest every month. You know, that is what this country was going through. How you mean? You know, Mr. Speaker, those things are hurtful, you know. They are hurtful because today I stand there to support borrowing because we need St. Jude. But all that squandering, all that largesse, all the money for the FFS, had we just been more financially prudent, we would have been in a better situation. And if we needed to borrow, probably we would have had to borrow less. But you give the SCs, 
let us say you give DSCs and you put in an interest component in the agreement and you say that on completion you are entitled to X amount of interest you have not done one third of the road which makes you entitled to any significant sum within the contractual arrangement but you are already drawing interest payments on the entire amount you know and today all those documents that were being hidden and in a separate uh, um, surreptitious way I was able to secure them today the very individual has the audacity to speak to accountability and transparency and say if he becomes prime minister again he will publish all contracts he will publish all contracts. But Mr. Speaker, there is one I know he will never publish. There is one I know he will never publish, Mr. Speaker. And it is dated July 15, 2021, 11 days before the elections. 11 days before the elections and today we have to be borrowing money. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the kind of financial atrocities contained in this document is a blatant disrespect, disregard to the little resources we have in this country. We are not Canada, Mr. Speaker. We are not Canada. We are not Cabot. We are not. We don't have the resources to just squander the little that we have. You know, and thank God, the Honorable Prime Minister has economics in his DNA. But tell me, Mr. Speaker, build and finance agreement. Those are the kind of things that cause us to be borrowing money here today. And it is a direct award. A direct award, Mr. Speaker, for some $75 million. You know, I'll just read, and if they want it to be made a document of the House, I will make it. I will never do like the Shanta King's report that was hidden for five and a half years. And today, all of a sudden, it becomes a document of convenience from which you can quote, no. I remember as well, Mr. Speaker, when I brought out the DSH agreement, DSH agreement, oh, it's fake. It's fake. But up to today, Mr. Speaker, it remains the document that may just cost the people of this country hundreds of millions of dollars. Because what? In an effort to show that I am a big prime minister, I can do what I want, the resources of the country you know, a rope was placed around the neck of the resources of this country. And trust me, the resources were murdered, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I just want to read a few excerpts from this 28-page bill and finance contract between the government of St. Lucia and the Fresh Start Construction Company Limited for the construction and finance of St. Jude. The very St. Jude. And you know, 75 million, 11 days before elections. You know, I sit here and I'm proud. You know why I'm proud, Mr. Speaker? I am proud that today I can make a contribution in this August chamber in the company of four ex, no, I was about saying four, but three and a half prime ministers. You know, Three ex-prime ministers and a current prime minister. I am, I, I, I am happy about that. And I will show you, Mr. Speaker, how like minds can augur well for the benefit of this country. Three of the four prime ministers deciding to go in one direction. One prime minister, or they have, decided to go in a separate way. And today... Today, the coffers of this country 
have to suffer the consequences of some bad financial decisions made by the ex-prime minister. But Mr. Speaker, back to this on the same St. Jude project, Mr. Speaker. I want to first, firstly go to the amount. The amount, it speaks to the works and everything else. Let's deal with the amounts, Mr. Speaker. And I quote, Mr. Speaker, the fourth schedule of the agreement, page 25 of 28. Hear this, Mr. Speaker. The client, which is the government, agrees to enter into a payment plan and settle the financial obligations within one year. What are the financial obligations, Mr. Speaker? $70,753,864.79. Les sept liciens, mon jour avant élection, gouvernement flambeau, te vle si yon agreement, pour 70 millions de dollars et pour le gouvernement payer à la Yolani. And hear this, hear this, hear this well, Mr. Speaker. Finance costs, the total is, I want you all to listen to this, you know. The total of the agreement is 64 million. They have built interest into the total, so it now jumps from 64 to 70. Finance cost is 6.6 .6 million, 10%. One year, 10%. Les sept lycées pour même saint jude là, one jour avant l'élection, gouvernement essaie by Frestat au contract. For 64 million dollars, and your charge, so you can create finance costs and the interest, so you can create six million six hundred sixty-three million dollars. That is equivalent, Mr. Speaker, to ten percent for one year. We are borrowing money today at two percent. At two percent. But if you think that is bad, Mr. Speaker, if you think that is bad, that, Mr. Speaker, is rosy when you juxtapose it to the penalty clauses. And I don't know why. I don't know how. Anybody with a good conscience, anyone who loves this country, anyone who's responsible for the finances of this country could ever look at that far less participate in its operation. Hear this well, Mr. Speaker. The payment will be carried out over a year in the following manner. That is a direct award for the very St. Jude, the box. And I'll come to the other buildings in a while. First and foremost, a 10% built into the contract. Within the first three months of signing the agreement, $26,882,000. Let's at least say 10, sir. Three months after you have signed it. Let's at least say 10 to pay the contract for almost $27 million. And you know what is hurtful, Mr. Speaker? That amount, that payment is not tied in with the percentage completion. Yes. Yes. There is no collaboration. There is no nexus. There is no con connectivity insofar as the agreement is concerned between paying one third of the money, one quarter of the money three months after and the performance of the, of the contract. Nothing at all. So after three months, we pay them 26 million. After the second quarter, 10 million. The third quarter, 18 million. 
and the last quarter 14 million seven hundred and seventy eight thousand now hear this mr speaker hear this well see how the atrocities against this country are compounded compounded mr speaker having built in a 10 percent interest into the contract it says here in case of late payment of any invoice submitted by the company the client shall pay you know jesus man the client shall pay interest of one percent per day per day so mr speaker you have the 60 something million that the contract was worth they added interest into it and if they send an invoice that includes interest already you now have to pay one percent interest per day on the interest already calculated within the amount oh lord i see our accountant general here and i know his heart is being torn apart because you cannot believe anybody would do that i know that i know that it's torn apart who in the right minds can think of that one percent per day one percent per day no <laughs> i'll make it a document of the house where were you when that was that been done yeah. <laughs> 11 days before election good you already blue you are topping on them already no they are topping on you already I moved it. <laughs> so mr speaker hear this well eh? this well eh, mr speaker we have a 64 million dollar contract man man this is an atrocity you have a 64 million dollar contract you build 10 percent into it already after three months i have to pay you 26 million which invariably means i'm already paying you interest and hear this for every day that that invoice is late i have to pay you another twenty two hundred and sixty eight thousand dollars per day you know and you want to come here and parade on the altar of being mr what what guru <laughs> No, there cannot be a point of order. There can only be a point of disorder. You know? I mean, the, the, Mr. Speaker, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. You have a DFC. You have a DFC where people are con collecting interest payments before they're entitled to anything. You have another contract sent to the attorney general and i suspect the attorney general at the time he felt this thing was so hot he dropped it like a hot potato you build 10% interest into a contract and you are now saying you are now saying that if an invoice is late 1% per day so on the first invoice Mr. Speaker if the payment was late by one day $268,800 a day one percent a day so if that mr speaker that invoice is 10 days late another 2.6 million dollars for lateness and we are paying interest on interest you know why you do that to the country man why you know mr speaker it's time we're not legislation crimes against the state 
because I cannot fathom how anybody with a right mind, anyone whose interest is this country, anyone whose interest is the upliftment of the standard of living of the people of this country, would do something like that. How can you? And today, we have to borrow, Mr. Speaker. We have to borrow. Now, you know, yeah, if I start building their own walls on every highway now, because there is money. There is money. You know, Mr. Speaker, even the leader of the opposition, after he said the buildings are eight years old, then he turned around and said they were gutted. He even said, and I quote, the layout was reconfigured. How can you reconfigure buildings already existing? In other words, Mr. Speaker, the emphatic point I want to make is that the leader of the opposition wants it ingrained in the minds of St. Lucians that the original St. Jude are all 80 year old buildings. Let's set this yes up halfway. Tutse building nakilase building meth. Another thing he said, and answer will prove, there are 28 buildings. There are not 28 buildings, there are 14 buildings. There are 14 buildings. Yeah, wait, but he was demolishing everything. Eh? You know? And when you tell me, Mr. Speaker, 14 buildings, we are a country of scarce resources. We have no oil. We have no gold. One would believe that a prudent prime minister would do whatever is necessary within the realms of possibility to ensure that he safeguards the expenditure that is borne by the taxpayers of this country. So when you put up two buildings and you figure those two buildings that cost taxpayers seven million dollars, you could put an excavator in it with total impunity. God is going to punish you at some point, politically or otherwise. You take an excavator and you put into two newly constructed buildings. God will punish you. We don't have an abundance of resources, Mr. Speaker. We don't have an abundance of resources. We don't have gold. We are not Canadians. We are not Kabotians. We are only St. Lucians. And all of us owe each other responsibility to watch our backs and watch the backs of the people who elected us to ensure we do what is best and what is in their interest. Not take seven million dollars and put an excavator in it. You know, and that reminds me, and everything I think of, Mr. Speaker, there's a whole trail, a whole trail. And today we have to borrow money, seven million dollars down the drain. And today we have to borrow. Only yesterday, Mr. Speaker, I believe the contract for custody suites was finalized. You know, we now have to go and borrow some four or five million dollars to rebuild the custody suites that I, your humble servant, commissioned and executed under the prime ministership of Stevenson King, member for, for Castries North. What happened to it? They put a, 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 an excavator in it. The father of the leader of the opposition. I was there. I was almost in tears. Yeah. And then two days after, he put the same excavator in the old prisons. And then he put it in police headquarters and sent the police band to rent somewhere. You know, you know and, and, and want to talk about having any kind of, you know, <laughs> Jesus, man. You know, the largest prisoner holding facility in, this, in the OECS. The largest prisoner holding facility. 
I remember when those police officers came to me as an ex-police. They said, Mr. Minister, you are a police officer. You know the difficulties we had in holding prisoners. We need somewhere. They were the ones, the police were the ones who identified the location with me, for me rather. And then I approached the member for Castries North, who was then Prime Minister. He asked me how much money I needed. And at the time it was about $900,000. And that was executed like Speedy, Speedy Gonzalez. And well, properly done, Mr. Speaker. And then I saw this 80-year-old man supervising an excavator as it egregiously placed its, 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 its bucket, you know, into the prison. And then you want to talk about crime? And then you want to talk about crime? You know, some of you have no shame. And then we have to borrow money now. We have to borrow to build a new custody suites. Yes. Borrow to build a new custody suites, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, which country? You know, governance has a concept of continuity. Yeah. Governance, good governance rather, does not see political color. Good governance sees benefits being bestowed on the citizenry of this country. That's what good governance is. You are there, Mr. Speaker. Like I said, two former prime, three, two and a half former prime ministers and a current prime minister. St. Jude started under the leadership of the member for Castries North. School children, Mr. Speaker, made contributions of their lunch monies. That is the quest and the magnitude of participation across the political divide and across the country. Preschoolers gave money. Persons from the diaspora, corporate partners, everybody contributed. And so it started under the stewardship of the member for Castries North. The elections were lost. Guess what the member for Viewford South did? He didn't demolish. He didn't stop. He continued right away. And today I say I want to give the member for Viewford South a round of applause for me, please. He deserves it. And in addition to continuing it, Mr. Speaker, he sought financing. He didn't only rely on local revenue. He sought financing to complete it. And then you have... Then you have the cheese, the cheese, who did all in his power to ensure that it did not complete. But you know, Mr. Speaker, there is an old saying in law, a cry of distress is a summons for help. When you are cashless, you look for a cash cow. And so, a cash cow was desperately needed and it was found in the box. In the box. The foundation. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, can you imagine? You know, can you imagine? They want to be Prime Minister again in this country? Ah, pardon me, Viva. Mr. Speaker, the foundation of that box was estimated to have costed just over three million dollars. It ended at over 300 percent increase, nine million. Direct award to Fresta. In fact, Mr. Speaker, in fact, a hundred and eighty million dollars, hundred and eighty million dollars was spent on the box. Not one contract, not half a contract, not quarter of a contract was awarded through the tendering process. Les Septlissiers, 
les simpliciens. Gouvernement flambeau dépensé à haut au 180 millions de dollars les boîtes là. Member for Miku South. Mr. Speaker, the member is, is misleading the, the House. He knows very well that the contract for the hospital, the, the new building, was given to OECC. And OECC subcontracted. <laughs> The $3 million that he's making reference to, yes, was for the ground foundation, but the $12 million included all of the structures up at the top, the frame of the building. So again, Mr. Speaker, I, you know, I, I like the antics and I like the passion, but at the end of the day, I could have stood on many occasions. I'm asking the member to try to stay in the framework of some truth of what he is saying. Just some. Mr. Speaker. I still, I wanted, I was expecting a refuter. Let me repeat exactly what I said. Member of Castro Central. Yes. The member from Miku South has indicated that contrary to your assertion that no contract was awarded, that one was in fact awarded, and that contractor subcontracted. Mr. Speaker, uh, I, all I said, not one contract, not half a contract, not quarter contract was awarded through the tendering process. That is what I said. That is correct, yes. So don't come and tell me it was awarded to that one and that one give, that one and that one give. I am no business with that, like the Jamaicans say. All I'm saying, the huge sum, the largest project in the history of this country in so far as expenditure from the government coffers are concerned, there was absolutely no tendering. That's what I said. And I further say, Mr. Member for Mikosov. Yes, again, Mr. 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 Speaker, the member is misleading the House. If, in fact, he wants to make that allegation, then go back to the beginning. And I want to know at any time when all the monies were spent, the $130 million previously, whether any of those uh, contracts. Member for Mikosov, that's your argument that, <laughs> that free cars are parked on a no parking zone and the police give one a ticket and the other two didn't get a ticket, so something. No, That's not, I mean, how does that address what the member for Castri Central no, has said? The member said this is the largest project and in the history of St. Lucia and spending government money and no tender was put. I just want to make the point that he is wrong because in the first part of the project, which actually spent more money than the, than the member second was all due was no ah, the no first member, the member from Nico South, if <laughs> all due respect, how does that answer the question he has asked? It doesn't. I'm just asking, as I said, Mr. Speaker, that he's misleading the House. He's making it out to believe that, in fact, that the only part of the building that did not go out to tender was that part. So again, But he let, never let, suggested that. He's okay. dealing with... I'm, so I'm asking for a point of clarity. Not a point of clarity. Uh, he's misleading the House because... How is he misleading the House? Because he said that this was the largest project in the history of St. Lucia using government monies that did not go out to tender. And I'm saying to you, Mr. Speaker, that the first part of the project was larger and it also did not the go out to tender. first part. Mr. Speaker, I am not here to divide the projects into parts and to, and to award a price tag on each part. Set a whole comprises of several parts. And when you put the parts together, you get a whole. You understand that now? Good. So because Mr. Speaker, I was about showing him the one for the, the 11 days before elections again. $70 million no tendering. A part. And that's a part. That's one part. The other part is the foundation. And the other part is the... You, I didn't ask you about parts. When you go and buy chicken, if you buy a whole chicken, you buy a whole chicken. If you want wings, you ask for wings. If you want legs, you ask for legs. If you want backs, you ask for backs. I tell you, if you want neck, you ask for neck. I just eat gizzard. So you go and buy. I telling you about the whole chicken. You can't about chicken back. Say pass I didn't ask you about chicken parts. I spoke about a contract, a whole chicken. I didn't tell you about the legs and the wings and the backs and the necks and the gizzards. But then again, 
Hey, you know, not everybody understands. So, Mr. Speaker, the largest contract in the history of this country that is paid for by the coffers of government never saw any tendering in any regard. None. And the last one which the Attorney General felt was a little too hot for him. He dropped it like... There, there's a Calypso, Mr. Speaker. I don't know if you were... Drop it like it hot. Drop it like it hot. Well, he dropped it. It was hot. Now, Mr. Speaker, very quickly, you know, the box the Remember guys built... Remember, Cast we sent you, you have 15 minutes left for your short contribution. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, there was no need to use the adjective of short. <laughs> I will, I, uh, 15 would be okay. Mr. Speaker, hear this, hear this, hear this, hear this. <laughs> you know, the guys built a box. And one of the things they refused to tell St. Lucians is that the box could have never stood alone as a hospital. That's right. Sir. Let me repeat that. Let's set this here. Let's not to Kadi a mampu miku saufte banu state of the art hospital. Bwet sala pate sadu but pa koiko l'hôpital. It is a tout lester se building pour complete l'hôpital. Okay? So it could not have stood alone. But you see, he has ingrained in our people is either the box or the buildings. Let's set the sets up way. You hear this? Bwetla pa mem nerf center hospital. Lusa sa nerf center ye, mem ko spinal kodu. Me adabun pani. It's like the spinal cord of any human being. So the box could have never subsisted alone as a hospital. You know? And yet, you come here attempting to justify the box. Mr. Speaker, you know, I have so much wastage and how why now we have to borrow. But before I touch it in the, within the 15 minutes, let me tell you how much the member for Miku South was warned. Okay. So you have here, Mr. Speaker, three and a half prime ministers, four, four prime ministers. X or otherwise. They are, they are X, Y, and current. Now, this prime minister went for the original St. Jude. Yeah. This Prime Minister, quite right, wisely, continued the original St. Jude. This Prime Minister said, yes, original St. Jude. All of them, one man stood alone. But not even that, Mr. Speaker. His supporters were wiser than him. His supporters on the 21st of September, 2018, Wrote him a letter, 2018 September, and I could make it a document of the House if I have to, Mr. Speaker. Signed by over 20 something supporters, begging him complete the original St. Jude. Uh -huh. And I will read excerpts of it very quickly. But then again, what did he say? I don't listen. I let the jackasses bray. That's what he said. So, the current Prime Minister is wrong. This ex-Prime Minister is wrong. This ex-Prime Minister is wrong. His supporters are wrong. He alone is right. Let me tell you what his supporters said, Mr. Speaker. Like I said, I could make it a document to have. Dear Hon the Cabinet of Ministers, 21st September 2018. Dear Honorable Ministers, we the undersigned a small group of your core UWP supporters from the Sufre Forces Act constituency who want to ensure that the UWP is victorious at the next general election. The victory will give <laughs> you party no goddamn it's you. The victory will give our government a further five-year term to fully implement its development plans and policies. Good. It was the UWP government. That was written to the UWP government headed by the member for Miku South. It says it is evident that two issues are being exploited vigorously by labor in Sufre, St. Jude Hospital, and the town square, both of which they stopped. 
both of which they stopped because they believe <laughs> you know you know you know <laughs> you know St. Jude Hospital and the town square you know the rallying cries that the UWP does not do anything that the Labour Party started hear what Flobos are saying to this gentleman that UWP does not want to continue anything Labour started and that's a fact stop the square stop the airport stop um, hospital stop the Wasco building the administrative building in view stop 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 this man paraded one day and he was on a stoppage exercise he just got to the super square all of you stop and then he fired a contractor you know yeah the same one dressed as the priest yes hear this uh, mr speaker imagine the political firestorm the government would face if for example this year we were hit by a category four hurricane and it would cause extensive damage to George Odlam Stadium, injuring or killing patients or staff, or serious accidents at your accident, sorry, at the Renora Airport, which would require swift and urgent medical care for several dozen persons. Honorable ministers, we cannot go into the next year with these lingering issues. We cannot afford any missteps. We must not allow these ills to deteriorate any further. There are storm clouds gathering over the distant political horizon, including the blue wave, and we must avoid complacency. 2018. Yes, I will gladly make it. Gladly. And then they went on. They went on, Mr. Speaker, to tell him, St. Jude Hospital, we implore you not to even consider building a brand new hospital as, be, as has been discussed. Construction of the new structure will take you into election year. There will be a lot of dissent and anger from the electorate owing to the fact that so much donated money, you know, so much donated money was spent to build the existing structure only to see the present administration choosing to abandon it rather than exploring more cost-effective ways of remedying the FUPA. Flabo's writing it to Flabo. Sabah Flabo, well, Sabah Flabo. Hey, y'all are hearing this? Y'all are hearing this? You know? Let's say, please, supporters Flabo, Teekwi, Gouvernement Flabo, Kadio Kosa, pas toucher um, via l'hôpital là, because trop moun mette l'argent pour rien, yo bay l'argent, yo rend l'argent from l'autre pays, yo bali just pour faire Saint Jude. You know? And they left it. And then they said, we are confident if you honorable ministers listen to our plea and heed our advice and implement the aforementioned measures promptly, residents and voters in Sufre are in our again. Residents and citizens in Sufre would immediately pay less attention to the opposition's noise and propaganda. And sign it's more detailed, but I will make it a document of the house. But when your own supporters can tell you, do not touch it, do not touch it. Three prime ministers tell you do not touch it. Your own report. And you know, Mr. Speaker, he read from his report. He read from the report, but he never said this. His own report that he paid a million dollars for said, we see, and I quote, we see a great value present in the works completed to date and believe that the project is solvable and be, uh, can be converted into a facility that can properly serve the needs of St. Lucia. So he disregarded three prime ministers. He disregarded his report. He disregarded his supporters. And he comes in this house attempting to justify it. Now he said his box was 90% complete. Miss, I, I have never heard more nonsense than that. Mr. Speaker, 
he commissioned a report in June of 2021 before the elections. <laughs> he said, Mr. Speaker, he as Prime Minister, the member of People South as Prime Minister, commissioned a report on the status of what they had done. And it was dated 29th of July, three days after the people unceremoniously dispensed with the unwanted matter. And so, Mr. Speaker, here is what it says here. Here is what it says. The, the report does not indicate the current state of completion. He said here that his box was 90% complete or 80%. I'm almost there, Mr. Speaker. Member for Castry Central, you have five minutes left. Very well. And would you provide the officer with oh, yes. the document? Yes, definitely. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, I'll be okay. I'll be okay. I'll close. I'll close. So, yes, Mr. Speaker, the report that he commissioned did not indicate the state of com the, the, the completion and percentage. But he stands in this house and gives us a percentage, and we don't know where it came from. But I'll read the findings of the committee that was placed by this government. It says here, the new buildings, which is the old phase one, as they call it, is between 70 and 90% complete. And they went on to say, the project as a whole, that is the box, remains less than 30% remains less than 30 percent complete mr speaker so and you know here this between february 2019 and july 2021 in less than two years mr speaker well just over two years they had spent 118 million dollars mr speaker I could go on and on, but here is little piece. The committee did not agree with the stated expenditure figure of some of the activities, as some of the activities in the contracts have not been executed. The contract awarded to Fresh Start in the sum of twenty-five million six hundred and eighty-seven thousand eight hundred and eighty ninety-eight dollars and fifty-three cents for the internal architectural elements. Architecture. Let's say, let's say, 25 million dollars for architecture. Say, draw, you can draw. Hey, you can draw. 25 million for that. Exist toujours. Ça pour pour fini. Mr. Speaker, I could go on and on, but I do believe that the good Lord has blessed me with an alternative platform. And it is not new spin, Mr. Speaker. It is not new spin. The good Lord has blessed me with an alternative platform to do justice to this, bill, to this motion today. And as I said earlier, I have not in the history of this country seen any loan with such favorable terms. 2%, five years grace, and a, a clause, 20 years to pay, and a climate affected clause. That was very well negotiated. And Mr. Speaker, whilst I do know my Prime Minister was instrumental and he was at the forefront, to all those other civil servants who were at the bargaining table and who assisted implicitly or otherwise, I say thank you on behalf of the government and people of St. Lucia. I take my leave.